Support and confidence are two parameters that show how interesting an association rule is. People sometimes use other criteria to evaluate the quality of an association rule, but these two are the most typical ones. So, um, let's fix a minimal support threshold. Let's call it min sub. And we'll say that a set A is frequent if its support is at least equal to mean support. We'll also say that uh, an association rule A implies B is frequent if its support is uh, um, equal to or greater than mean support. So we fix this uh, mean support threshold and we'll also fix a threshold for confidence. Minimal confidence, min conf. So uh, the association rule mining problem can be stated as follows. find all association rules with support and confidence greater than or equal to mean support and mean confidence respectively. Well, as I said, uh, other criteria than support and confidence are sometimes used. Um, and then the problem statement is a bit different, but this is the most typical problem statement for associational mining. And that's how it's usually solved. First, we find all frequent sets. all attribute sets with support at least equal to mean support or greater than mean support. And then for each such, such set, um, we generate a number of association rules but output only those uh, that have confidence high enough. So we output all association rules of the form A implies M if a confidence of such a rule, the confidence of such a rule is at least min conf. Well, this is the general schema, but sometimes variations are possible. First, do we really have to find all frequent sets explicitly? Well, not really, because if a set is frequent, then every each subset is also, is also frequent. That's the main property of association rules. That's the main property of frequent sets on which algorithms are based. So why is it so? Well, if a set A is frequent, 
then it is contained in a large number of objects. But then if you take any of its subsets, it's going to be contained in the same objects and maybe some additional objects. So its support can only be bigger or equal to the support of the set A. So subsets of frequent sets are frequent and therefore it's sufficient to find only maximal frequent sets. Once you found maximal frequent sets, you can compute all frequent sets out of them. Well, anyway, you have to compute frequent sets or maximal frequent sets, and this is probably the most computationally intensive part among these two. So there are lots of algorithms that find all frequent sets or all maximal frequent sets. A priori is probably the most famous of them, but there are more efficient algorithms, such as LCM or FP growth. And some of the FCA algorithms can also be adapted to do this. And actually, FCA has more to say about all of this. So, um, do we really have to find all association rules? When we compute implications, which we try to compute the canonical basis, a small set of implications from which all other implications follow. Can we do something similar for association rules? Well, yes, something similar. Um, first of all, let's talk a little bit about frequent sets that are closed. So frequent closed sets. So let's look at a set A double prime. That's a closed set. Its support is by definition the size of A triple prime. But the size of A triple prime is the same as the size of A prime because A triple prime equals A prime. And this is precisely the support of A. So it's if you have a access to the closure operator double prime, it's sufficient to know the support of every closed set to know the support of every set. And therefore it's sufficient to consider only frequently closed sets. And some of the most efficient algorithms use this fact and uh, compute only frequently closed set, frequent closed sets. Now let's look at the support of an association rule A implies B. Uh, this is by definition the support of A union B divided by the support of B. And now by this property, this is the same as the support of A union B double prime divided by the support of B double prime. And this is precisely the support of the association rule. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, of course, uh, the support of A implies B, the support of A union B divided, divided by the support of A, not B. And, and here we have not B double prime, but A double prime. And then uh, this is exactly the support of the association rule A double prime implies A union B double prime. So if we have access to the closure operator um, and we know the support of every association rule between two closed sets. So between A and B such that A and B are closed. Then we can compute the support of any association rule whatsoever. This means that we don't really need to store all association rules if we have access to the closure operator and if we have enough computational power to compute the closure. Uh, what about confidence? Well, the confidence of A implies B 
is also going to be the confidence of uh, A double prime implies A union B double prime and it's easy to check using the definitions. This makes it possible to define a sort of a basis for association rules. So this basis will include the canonical basis for implications, in other words, for association rules with confidence one. And also it will include confident rules, that is rules with high confidence, with confidence above min conf among neighboring frequent intents. So intents that are neighbors in the concept lattice. This is sometimes called a uh, Luxemburger basis. Although the real Luxemburger basis is a bit more sophisticated than that. It's, it's actually smaller. Uh, still, we'll use this term. We'll call it Luxemburger basis. And in the next video, we'll see how to use it to derive supports and confidences for um, association rules from supports and confidences of association rules from the Luxemburger basis.